Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at 3D Net, so monocular 3D object recognition for tracking monitoring. So this acts like pretty cool. We're just going to have a single camera that can do traffic monitoring. It's going to do 3D optic recognition. It's going to like estimate the speed, generate heat maps and so on. So this is pretty cool. And it's doing everything but just having a monocular camera. So we're going to see how we can set up the code. We're going to run some examples and then we're going to take a look at the results. So let's just jump straight into Visual Studio Code. We're going to see an example video here of the camera. So we have a monocular camera sitting as the security camera doing traffic monitoring. So we have a lot of pedestrians walking around. We have some cars driving around. We're going to estimate the speed of the car, both going to do 2D detection and also 3D optic detection. And we're going to do everything with this 3D net. So it's called like traffic net. This can both be used for traffic monitoring. It can be used like in, in malls, uh, retail stores and so on, like basically just to track where are people moving around. Uh, where is the like the heat map uh, warmers and so on so we can use this for pretty much like everything we just have a single camera so let's just jump straight into the code here this is based on the yolv5 model again we can probably use the yolv8 model as well so it's both going to estimate the, the depth so we can get like 3d bounding boxes and we can also get 2d detections and so on combining all of it doing statistics doing analytics on it for this traffic monitoring so we can see we have the yolv5 so this is basically like the code that we're going to run they also have some data. This is the video that we just went through. We have the environment, like how to set it up and so on. So you can actually go in and take this Docker file directly set up your environment with Docker. But you, if you just have an environment, development environment, you can just pip install these modules and dependencies directly. So again, pretty much like all versions or like pretty much like all environments come with all of these as standard. You probably only need to like pip install OpenCV and also filter pi. So this was the only one that I needed to install. You can just go in, open a new terminal, directly go in and pip install the dependencies. So if you want to pip install filter pi, we can just type it in like this. My requirements all are satisfied, but then it will download it to your computer and into your environment. You can do that for all of them here. If you don't just want to use this Docker file that they're providing, we just need to run this TD net as we can see up here. So first of all here we can see that we have this load class. It basically just like loads in a lot of stuff, both for the 2D detection, 3D detection and so on. We can do both heat map, we're taking the cars, trucks and so on. We're basically just specifying where on the map. So we have all this set up here to start with, then it's basically just checking for the paths. So let's get down to the exciting part where you just have a for loop running through all the frames in your video. So we can basically just take an arbitrary video, throw it into this model, and then it will be able to do our traffic monitoring. So right now here, we can basically just see that as long as we're able to read in frame, we're just continuing, and then we'll go down and do the processing. So first of all, we're going to do our optic detection part. We call self.detector.detect. We're using the YOLO v5 model for detection. We throw in the image and then we get the detections out. Then we can go in and use this extract detections and we basically just get the detections out. We can then have a for loop running through all the detections. We can extract the bounding boxes with the top left corner and the bottom right corner. And then we can just directly go in and use that for our like reference points, both for our 3D models, like our 3D bounding boxes, but also just like visualize it directly on our images. So we actually want to have history over our video. So we're tracking like the pedestrians, but also the vehicles over time. We're going to match the overlap. So we're going to have overlapping regions. So we can create, create this like um, environment, like this 3D environment where we have this bird eye view. Then the next thing here is basically just the heat map. There's a lot of setup here. You won't really go into details with that. Like there's a lot going on, but it's basically just setting up the heat map. Um, detections and, and all those different things. So here we have a heat map for the vehicle. We have the heat map for the speed and we also have the heat map for the nearest and we're also going to have a heat map for the crowd so we can see how people are moving around in the image so we're also going to have this visualizer so we can have our like top view over our traffic so we're basically just doing our traffic monitoring we can also terminate our program here but this is basically what is what is doing but the main idea is that we just do detections with OpenCV. we have some p3 configurations we do our monitoring uh, heat maps we do a lot of visualization and analytics then we have our parser options here so our argument parser we can specify yolo so the default one is five we can also use four five and and seven here as you can see we can use the root where we want to save the results um, if you want to like start and also the end so the start frame and also the end frame we basically just want to run the whole video through we can specify the weights so as default it's using the yolo v5 large model and again like if you're not specifying anything it will download the weights to your computer 
We can also specify the configuration here for a YOLO v4 model network architecture and also the data if we have trained our YOLO v4 model on that data. But let's just use the, like the default parameters here and then just specify the video that we want to do traffic monitoring off. Again, we can just pass in an MP4, AVI, MPG or M uh, MOV file. And then it's just going to call these functions that we have. So this is just like set up again. So inside this if statement here and our main loop, we're basically just opening up our video, checking if it's actually like um, in our path or like in the directory that we're working in. Then we just basically just create an instance of our load class with our path and also our options. We set our batch equal to true and then we call a run method, which will basically just do all the processing as long as we're able to open up the video file. So yeah, that's a pretty quick run through. Let's now go into the fun part and actually see the results. And then let's take a look at all the results, both for the heat map, update detection, basically just having the videos. So if you want to take your machine learning, AI and computer vision skills to the next level, I also have my courses on the website. You can go check them out. We have everything from update detection with deployment, update tracking with YOLO V8. We also have transformers and segmentation courses. The most interesting one, for me, it's definitely like this research paper implementation course where we learn how to actually like implement research paper architecture. So we're going to have the architecture on one side. We're going to have code on the other side. So yeah, let's open up a, a new terminal. Let's just drag it up here. Then we should be able to just call this um, Python and tdnet.py. And then let's go up and again and check the different kind of arguments. Oops, that's down. There we go, we need to specify the source. So we have our source and our source will be the directory. So let's just go open that up. So we have our data and then we have our leads. So we're going to copy the path like that. There we go, this is the whole path to the video. Um, and then we're also going to have our root. Oh, not our root, we're going to just going to use YOLO v5. So then we also need our um, save, save directory. So where do we actually like want to save our video? And that will be inside. Um, let's maybe just like create a new one here. So we'll, we just have data. Let's just save it inside data here, for, uh, to be honest. Uh, maybe we just create a new folder called output. There we go. And then we have our data. We have our output. So we want to save it within this output folder. So we're going to copy the path. Save it like that. We have the weights. We're just going to use the default one, the start and the end. We're also going to go with the default one. We're going to use v 5 so let's now just go down to our terminal here and just copy paste this in. I have just copy pasted it. So we're going to run our Python script. So tdnet, we're inside our code um, folder. Then we're going to specify the source. We're going to specify where we want to save our results and also just end it after 100 frames. So we should be able to run this now and see the results after it's done running everything through and doing the processing and the traffic monitoring. Looks like it loaded in the video. We can see that we're using a CUDA GPU. Model is running on CUDA GPU. We're using the YOLO V5 model, Torch with CUDA, fusing layers. We're using the large model, that is correct. Now we can see that it does the processing on 100 frames as we specified. So right now it takes it like around like, it actually like does the processing like 1.5 frames per second. So this acts like rather slow, that's why we ended it off after 100 frames. Okay, so we can now see it's done processing, it says done. We should now have saved it in traffic net, the results and in video. So we can go inside the results. Then we have the video folder and now we can actually like see all the videos that we have. So let's go in and take a look at them. I'm going to open it up in the file explorer. We can see we have all of them here. So this is just pretty crazy of what you're going to see in just a second. So let's just start on the lower end. Let's just start with 2D optic detection. So here again, we have a monocular camera sitting up here as a traffic monitoring camera. And again, we can see this, that we're running this for 100 frames with 30 frames per second. So we get around like three uh, three seconds of video. Again, you can run this for longer and you will like, like be able to see like longer trajectories for the heat maps, but also for uh, basically just tracking the pedestrians. We can see the CD net with 3D uh, bounding boxes. So now we can see that we're predicting 3D bounding boxes around the car where before we only did 2D object detection. And it is, it is actually like fairly nice detections, like even around the pedestrians here. Does a pretty good job of track tracking. It doesn't really lose track of the cars here, as you can see. It's going to see the environment map here from zero to hundred. So here we can see like these cars driving around. I'm really excited about this uh, red car here. Like why it's act like red? Probably because it's like driving away or like maybe driving like above the, the speed limit. Yeah. So here we may be like estimating the wrong uh, the wrong speed unless this guy is going uh, fairly fast. 
But here you can see the blue dots is the pedestrians walking around. We have the cars. We even have the trajectories for the cars. We have all the lane markings. So these are like predefined maps, but we have this 3D overview over our uh, traffic. So this is just really awesome. We can also see the figures here for the average speed as well. We can also see the speed limitation. So we can also go in and monitor and see if cars are like going over the speed limit. We also have these here for the counters. So we can see the number of uh, pedestrians walking around and also the number of vehicles for the frames. So we can actually see we have a lot of pedestrians walking in our frame. So now we go down to the heat map here. So let's take a look at the heat map. So this is basically just generating a heat map over like where are people moving around. So the more people are at a specific location for a longer time, like the more red it will be. And then you can see the heat map basically just develops or like extends when people are moving around from frame to frame. Let's take a look at this heat map here. So we can even see like our heat map from our top view. So this is also like pretty awesome. You don't really need like video. You can also run this on a live camera. Could probably do that at some point. So definitely stay tuned for that. We might even go in and try to run this on some different videos, try to compare them in different scenarios and so on. So stay tuned for that. Remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video so you get a notification when I upload that. So yeah, let's go and take a heat look at the heat map for our vehicle movements. So this is also like pretty awesome. So we can see the heat maps for the vehicles from above as well. We can also see the speed. So we can see this guy up here act like went over the speed limit which was also why it had this uh, red bounding box. So again, <laughs> it's pretty crazy and awesome traffic traffic monitoring system. We can actually like, see here that it breaks, which might mean that it actually like, goes over speed limit. But again, this is act like in like a traffic intersection and so on. Yeah, we can see, we can even see here, like he breaks like three times. We also saw, saw that from the traffic light. So we can actually see that he breaks three times from the original video. Let's just go back again. It actually like, looks pretty good. So we can see one, two, two, three. So we can actually see he breaks three times. And then we can also see like here on the heat map. So we get this heat map with three breaks. So here he actually like, goes over the speed limit. So he's actually like, breaking after these ones. So that is actually like, pretty cool as well. This is awesome. This is really, really awesome. Like creating a traffic monitor system just from a molecular camera using like 2D object detection based on yellow. It is just so awesome. We're definitely going to cover this way more in future videos. Stay tuned for that. We're going to test it out in different scenarios. We might even like dive more deeper into the actual like, code, maybe do some modifications here and there, try to fine tune it on our own system. So thank you guys for watching this video here. Again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I'm really excited for the upcoming videos. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you in those ones, guys. Bye for now.